well, you should be winning races, you know. I mean, that's that's one of the best teams out there, and that don't always work, you know. I mean, you know, you always want to win more, more. But when I got with Glenn and Pete, I went from, I doubled that. Yeah. I went up into the 40s, you know, and if I can't win every night, then I don't want to play the game. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted it, you got it. The place for the untold, real, raw, and juicy stories of dirt track racing. It's Dirt Track Confessions. And now here's your host, Mandy Pouch-Mahaney. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dirt Track Confessions. I am your host, Mandy Pouch-Mahaney, and today we have my father, Billy Pouch, joining us. Thank you for joining us, Dad. You're welcome. <laughs> Not that he had much of a choice, but I appreciate it. <laughs> so um, today's episode, I want to talk, you know, winning versus losing and the streaks, you know, because when there comes winning, there comes losing, right? Yeah, it's all part of the game. So um, for both your winning streaks and your losing streaks, you know, when you were, we'll start with winning. When you were winning, you what, what, what was your biggest winning streak? Do you remember? Um, God, I did 10 in a row. Flemington in 81 with the Lydell brothers. Um, I think I did 10 or 12 at East Windsor with uh, Tabloid Graphics with Ray Carroll. Um, man, I, I don't remember them all, but, uh, you know, when you get on a winning streak, you don't want to change nothing, you know? You just kind of go down the road the same way and look at the same things every week and don't look at nothing different don't spook yourself or change yourself or whatever you know but uh when you get on a winning streak you don't want to change nothing you had your winning streaks not not many people can do that many wins in a row these days if they do it's amazing yeah but like months or years down the road could you pinpoint for say your winning streaks what could have been the causes for them uh, just everything aligned up, you know, it's, it's, it's always the same story. You could, you get a good owner, uh, that I can afford to race and give you the right equipment to go out and win with and, uh, surround yourself with the right people that know what's happening to, uh, to put the car together. And so it don't fall apart. Just, you know, it's like a football team. I always say a race car team is like a football team. You get the right people around you. You throw touchdowns, you get the right, wrong people around you, you're laying on your back and mm -hmm. getting sacked all the time. So uh, I was fortunate, you know, I always had a lot of good people around me. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of people that, that I had to teach what to do. And, you know, once they learned it, they kind of picked it up and went on from there and, and, and got better at it. And you have to you have to want to do it, you know. You have to want to, you know, you have to have – be part of the team and want to be a winner, you know? I mean, it's easy just to go to races just to go there, but if you go there to win, it's it's a whole different level of uh, of competition you got to be ready for. And, uh, mm. you know, and, and you got, like I said, you got the right people around you, and they got to win as much as you want to win. If they don't, you know, you're just going along for a ride, you know? And uh, for the most part, when I won a lot of races, my father was involved, and, you know, he had a lot of experience, and I had a lot of good guys. And, you know, back through the years there, you know, I had Chucky Snyder. He did tires for me, and and, and Chucky got really good at it, and uh, and and that was a big thing. Uh, you know, I had guys like John Sign. He was with me for a while when we won a lot of features together. Uh, big Artie, we won a lot of features together with him. And, and I, I just can't remember for – or say them all because there was a lot of people involved when I won a lot of races. And, uh, but it was, the main thing was we all wanted to win. You know, we all went there, we wanted to win. And that's what it was all about. When we didn't win, we weren't happy. Mm -hmm. So the people you surround yourself with essentially. That's the whole key to winning. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've seen great quarterbacks and I just, I always keep ref referring to football, but same with racing. I've, I've seen, you know, good guys go with great teams and it's like wow this guy's gonna win a lot of races and the chemistry just wasn't there to to put it all together to go out and win races and it's like well you should be winning races you know i mean that's that's one of the best teams out there and that don't always work you know i mean it's just a chemistry of you know the owner the driver the crew and and everybody there working together to win races and sometimes that don't always happen you know and uh 
you got to be a little bit of a politician to make it happen sometimes. What do you feel, you know, you're, whenever your losing streaks may have been, um, do you have an idea of what could have been the cause for them? Uh, just getting behind on technology sometimes or being in the wrong being in the wrong chassis or motor or something. There, there's a million things out there that could just de- derail you off of being successful. You know, I mean, I was on top of the world in 1990. If I won 48 races with uh, Pete Chesson, and I was on top of the world, you know. I mean, it's like, wow, yeah, the world's Billy Pouches. You know, I can't lose. You know, I had a great team and great owner and everybody good around me, and we're all going out winning races and – and uh, and then 1991, Pete got in some legal competi- legal problems and stuff, and he had to back away from racing. And and I was left with the, you know, he was good enough to leave me a lot of the team, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, cars and motors and stuff. And I kind of like purchased some of it off him, and he worked with me pretty good. And uh, I had to start a whole new team in 91 there and Ray Carroll came on board and uh, John Sines stayed with me, Chucky. And uh, we, we still went out and won a ton of races, but I was on top of the world. Flemington had the best year I ever had there. We won 14 races, tied out as Nady for the most wins in a year, won the championship for, I think the six straight year, six straight years of winning championships yeah. at one track. I don't think too many guys have ever done that. But I don't think many people probably like no, to. And, and, <laughs> and that was with uh, one, two, three, three different teams, you know. And uh, like I said, we were on top of the world, and, and they paved it. And it's like, okay, well, it's just a different surface. We'll go back and kick their ass. And we were in the wrong chassis. We were in an Olsen. Troyers were the hot lick. We were on American Racers and Hoosiers were the hot lick. Just everything kind of turned around and put me at a deficit instead of a plus. And uh, we struggled. We struggled a lot that year. And uh, just learning asphalt, which I wasn't really used to. And Flemington was very fast as a dirt track. And it was real fast as a asphalt track. And uh, <clears throat> But I learned it. I damn near killed myself a couple times during the course of the year. And... Uh, I was lucky. I, I we started out with the with Ray Carroll and the kid racing team, and uh, and uh, Olson backed us with a car. We had good motors. We had Ron Shavers motor. We had everything right, but we didn't really know asphalt that well. And uh, and Truyer kind of had a better car at the time. And uh, and I ended up somewhere during the season there. I switched over with Benny Benny Shear with the. 1A, and uh, he had a Troyer car, and we ran small blocks with him, and I got him to put a, a big block in, and we started winning some modified races and stuff. and But uh, there was just a learning curve running asphalt and and what you get away with and what you couldn't get away with. And tire management was big, and uh, it was something I wasn't used to. You know, you just go out and I run hard all the time. And with the asphalt tires, that was a whole different deal. But... Uh, like I said, I learned a lot, and, uh, you know, but from 1990 to 91, it was like, wow, what an awakening, you know, we're, we're so dominant, and we still, I think, we still ended up winning the most race Northeast in 91, but uh, I really struggled at Flemington. Mm-hmm. So, for those that, you know, they're racing, they're they're winning like you, or, you know, they're winning at their weekly track, and rules change and uh like you said you had to adjust well where's the like the tipping point when you're like okay i should probably go back to square one when you don't win for a while (laughs) (laughs) that's that's the biggest thing sometimes you get out left field and you, you overthink your your situation and start thinking you know i need to do this i need to do that and this will work and you're looking for some super setup or something and I had it a couple of years ago. We struggled at um, Bridgeport there. The track was rough, and and uh, we, we just just couldn't get the car to turn. We were bouncing around a lot, and, uh, you know, I, I always do my own setups, try to figure it out. I don't usually call around talk to a lot of anybody, really, because I figure if I can figure it out, it's mine. 
But if I start talking to everybody, McNeil or this one, then they kind of got my setup and it goes out there to everybody. So I always like to try to figure it out on my own. And we struggled. We really struggled. We were having a hard time. And, you know, I mean, I have a lot of knowledge for Drayson and Phil Cox was I mean, my crew chief and, and the same thing. And then finally my kid put it to me and he goes, Hey, he says, just, just put a standard Picknell setup on the car and, uh, see where you're at from there. He goes, you know, it's a lot of these kids that they hardly can drive, but they're doing pretty good. And, uh, so I went out and took his advice and put, uh, put a big nail set up on and boom, we were back in business. We were, we were in the hunt to win again. And, uh, but that's how easy it is to get out. You know, I guess you just over, overthink your, you know, you know more than you do, you know, sometimes you get too smart for your, for your, for your mind, you know, and, uh, we got there and, uh, we got it straightened out and really picked up the end of the season there and, and won a race and, and come back to be a contender. And, uh, but it's, it's not hard to get get off, you know. I see it. I mean, just between you, Billy, and Mike is um, so many people are go to Billy and Mike, you know, my husband and my brother, for anyone that does not know. Um, everyone's like, well, you have Billy Pouch, you know. <laughs> like, why don't you just take his setup and do what he does? But I think you got between you and Billy alone, you re- learned right out the gate, like, not – not one driver drives the same. So to share notes is okay to an extent, but I also feel that can hurt some people. Yeah, it's like Mike tried to help me there when we were struggling, and and he was running New York. New York's a different different dog up there. It's, it's They're dry, slick, slippery, slow tracks, and down here they're pedal down, Bridgeport, High Bank. You, you, you were all around there. And it's just a different setup, and what he worked, what he tried to relay to me didn't work for me. And and I have the same problem with Billy. What I use doesn't work for him, it mm-hmm. seems like. And we're just different styles of how we race, how we lift, how we get on the throttle and stuff. And I'm a more of an impatient sprint car guy. I got to get there quick. And mm-hmm. Billy's more calculated and slow. And Mike's mm-hmm. even... Worse than oh that, he needs 200 lappers, you know. <laughs> yes. He loves long races, yep. which there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm used to a short race. I Most of my career, we, we ran a lot of 20 lappers, and it's like, boom, you got to go. You got to go. today. I mean, first lap, they drop the green. You got to pass 10 cars, you know. Um, but like I said, it's it just, you know, we're all different. But sometimes, you know, a lot of times Billy will run wherever he runs. He'll call me. I'll be at home. And we'll talk as he's coming home to what he felt the car was. And I'll tell him what I think, not that he listens, but what I think he should have done, you know, just to bounce stuff off him to make you think. Sometimes you got to have somebody throw something at you and you think about it, you know, like, yeah, I think that was the problem, you know, or nah, that wasn't that. That's not it, you know, but uh, it's good because you have somebody to bounce stuff off uh, in one way. But like I said, I can't take Billy's setup, put on my car, mm-hmm. and feel comfortable. I mean, I there was a, the last year I ran New Egypt in 16, I was struggling, struggling with a shock package I had. And they came down one night and gave me four Bilsteins to put on my car. We put them on, and I went out, and I was actually like, wow. It woke the car up. I was good. I won the race. And Billy ended up finishing second, which he probably regrets that he gave me the shots. <laughs> yep. But, you know, it's just, they, it, it just, we struggled, you know. Sometimes you, I hate to give up on stuff. I hate to give up on cars and stuff. And uh, with these new cars, they're, they're such flexi flyers and twist, a, twist away, and they give up they give up too quick, you know. They're, they just don't last as long as the cars that have passed it. So we discussed um, what you felt your biggest causes were, you know, for your winning streaks. Now, what do you think um, some hurdles caused you from not winning some races? Well, biggest thing is age. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's like my owner goes, what do we need to win? I said, I had about 20 years younger. I'd be a Mm -hmm. lot better, you know, but you just can't buy that or get it, you know. But uh, reality sets in, and it's a, you know, everybody has their, their turn, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just, it's tough. I mean, the, 
as I got older, I quit smoking because I, I, I loved racing, you know, and, and I loved to smoke too, but I gave it up and uh, so I could last longer and be more competitive. And, ah, uh, oh, geez, it's just, you know, working out. I never worked out. I never, you know, exercised or nothing. I was, I don't know, I just never needed it. I could sit up in the seat and, and drive all the laps as hard as I could. And, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing was, Age catches up with you, and there's nothing you're going to do about that. But uh, the rules change, you know. I mean, you know, I, I like big blocks. I'm a, I'm a big block believer that they're, they're a better race to run them than these spec motors and stuff. And there just seems to be a little bit more of a, a wider span between them where the specs are like, boom, you're all the same. You're all up either each other's ass. And, you know, you got to be that way to pass. And, when something happens, boom, you're crashed, you know, but, uh, and, and, and with all the air on the car, you know, if they took some air off the cars, probably the specs wouldn't be so bad, but you know, when you put a big block and you got so much more power, you need more air, but you don't have it because you got so much body panels, but, uh, changing the rules. I mean, these, these, uh, coil cars and left side pan hard dirt, they're a whole different animal. And, you know, I, I, I was on them like two, three years before everybody got on them and uh, worked with them just because it was something different. It was interesting. and uh, But the only thing, that left side pan art, it just beats the piss out of you, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's that's hard. A lot of the, a lot of the older guys, it's, it's tough on you. Or, you know, if you have a bad back or something, it's tough on you. But uh, that's the way it is today, and that's what everybody's running, the uh, left side you know, pan hard with the with the coil cars, and they're just a a real nasty car to drive, and and uh, they're tight, and and if you get on a rough track, it's good chance you're going to flip. Yeah. So, what would you say uh, were some of the factors that turned things for the better throughout your career? Get with the right people. The right people. That's always it's, that's always a factor, or you get with people that can afford to race. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've been fortunate when I was, when I was with you know, my first big rides, I always thought was with Glenn Heinemann with Keystone Pretzel and, mm-hmm. and, uh, Pete Chesson with, uh, Barker Bus and, and I, I was good when I was into the Blasio brothers, but they were limited on funds and stuff. We won a lot of races with the Lydell brothers. It was the same thing. We won a lot of races, but you know, you always want to win more, more, you know, and, with them, I was like a 20, 20 win a year driver. But when I got with Glenn and Pete, I went from, I doubled that. Yeah. I went up into the forties, you know, and, and, uh, cause we, we had the funds to do it and do it right, you know, and, uh, that always seemed to be the, the difference between winning, you know, 20 to winning 40. Mm-hmm. You know, you got, you got people that can afford it. So win or lose. How do you know at the end of the day of the race, was it the car or the driver? Well, if you lose, it's always the car. <laughs> Amen. That's your brother. He'll tell you that. Oh, absolutely. It's always <laughs> it the car. It ain't never fault. the driver. Nope. But Sorry, Billy. Yeah, you, you know, it's funny. The older I got, I mean, I've been with Kevin for the last 15 years yeah. of my career. And, and, uh, we finally overtook Glenn Heineman for the most wins with Billy Pouch. So Kevin's got that record now. And Kevin's got also got the record for putting up with me the longest, longest. Yep. You know, which I'm not the easiest guy to put up with. But, but, okay, we're, we're talking. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Um, was the car or the driver that had the most influence? Okay, the car or driver. That's what I was getting up yeah. to. We Kevin, Kevin always give me good equipment. Don't yes. get me wrong. We had Bruno Motors. Morrison Motors, we mm-hmm. always had good equipment, you know. Um, but I could see it as I was getting older. I couldn't sit up in the seat like and do it like I used to when I was 30. So there's a lot of times I got out and I knew I didn't give it what I should have given it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like to say it's a car, um, but really Billy Pouch couldn't do what he used to do when he was 30 or 40, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but there's nights to cart, like I said, we struggled that one whole year at Bridgeport two years ago with the handling. We just yep. were off, and it's just the way it is, you know. Or you get behind with your motor program that you're not, you're not, you know, you're not pushing people. You always got to be pushing people. If you're not pushing people, you don't have enough motor, you know. 
if if you're just maintaining, that's not going to win races. I feel at the end of the day, as a driver, I mean, in anything in life, you know when you gave it your all. Yeah, yeah, you did everything you could do, and okay, yeah, there's a lot of times a car comes up short, but I was always the guy to set the car up, so I couldn't say, well, the handling wasn't there because I'm the guy that did it, you know, so I always like to set my own cars up and create my own destiny to how it is and, and how it's going to be, and, uh, you know, so there was there's no pointing fingers when I got out of a car. I always, you know, it's like I wasn't the best car that night, you know, mm-hmm. it's like that's that's the difference between me and a lot of people. I get out and, you know, so-and-so was the best guy tonight. His car was the best, and I was second or third or fourth or fifth, you know. It's just that's where it's at, you know. I mean, I don't like that. I want to win every night. If I can't win every night, then I don't want to play the game, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess what we'll close with for this episode uh, is maybe some word of advice. So for um, – the driver that maybe hasn't broken through yet or, you know, that driver that just came off of a pretty crappy season. Like, how do you just give them the vote of confidence just to keep going? I always, always, always look, you know, it's like you ask your crew, how well, how'd I look? Oh, you're great, you're great, you're great. I don't want to hear that. I want to know where I wasn't good. I don't mm-hmm. care. Maybe I was good three quarters of the way around the track, but I want to know that yep. one corner or wherever it was, I was lacking. I wasn't coming up off the turn. I wasn't driving in hard enough. I need to know that mentally so I can fix that. Mm-hmm. And it's the same way of coming off a bad season. You got to sit down and look at, okay, was it our motors? Was it our handling? Or was it just my driving? Mm-hmm. You know I mean? There's a lot of drivers out there that aren't drivers. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, realistically, you know, I mean, some some people take longer to progress and be drivers, and you got to want to be it, mm-hmm. you know. And, I mean, oh, yeah, I want to win, I want to win, I want to win, but I don't want to work on a car. Mm. Well, that's all part of it, too, you know. It's like if you're not working on your car understanding the set basic setups and setups and all that kind of stuff or – or even the motor combinations, you know, we, we got too much bottom end. We need to take some of that away, put it up here on the top end or mid range or move things around. But at the end of the year, you got to, you got to look at all this stuff and figure out, okay, we got to go into next year with a new game plan. What do we need to do to win races? I'm falling out of the seat. Maybe that's the deal. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I got to go to the gym You know, I got to, I'm not giving it. I see guys fall out of the seat all the time when I oh, race. Yeah. You know when they're going to fall out of the seat. You know, I always tell my kid the last two laps make them their best laps, mm-hmm. you know. But I, I can see people falling out of the seat when I'm racing with them, you know. And and uh, if that's the case, you need to go to the gym, you know. Um, but you got to you gotta look at your weak points and make them stronger so you can win races, you know. I mean, some of it might be finances. A lot of people aren't well financed, so... You got to try to go out and find more money to buy better parts and motors and cars to, to win, you know, and that might be the area you need to work on, you know, but there's a lot of areas in racing you got to work on. Yeah. That's always, it's like any business. You just have to evaluate your season, where you did wrong, what you did right. And um, someone recommended not too long ago, like not just studying yourself, but studying other drivers. Yeah, you, you always look at successful people and how they're doing it and what they're doing. Like, you know, this guy's winning all these races with two cars. I got five. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I got too many. Mm-hmm. Or this guy's got eight cars and he's winning races. Maybe I don't have enough, you uh, know. Yeah. You got to evaluate all that. But then you got to look at how many people he has helping him versus mm-hmm. how many people you got yeah. helping you. You know, most people don't have no help, you know. So it's like you got to figure out an easier way to doing it, you know, that it's not as much work too, you know, you just got to figure out how to be successful. And, and sometimes, like you say, looking at other people, what they do, studying how they do stuff or just parking next to them, you know, you park next to a good guy some nights and it's like, you know, I don't do nothing to his car all night. You know, nope. he's that confident. I'm there mm-hmm. changing shocks and springs and gears and all this stuff. And, you know, maybe I don't need to be doing this much stuff, and but you got to, you know, concentrate on what good guys are doing and maybe do what they're doing. 
Yeah. No, that makes sense. All right. Well, thank you, Dad, for your, I don't know, your brilliant knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> your years of uh, experience. But if you guys enjoyed this, definitely please comment. We're going to bring him back on here. You know, any, like, how many years, Dad, did you race? Or are racing, I should say. We're not. Well, I raised 48, plus I helped my father before me. And so yeah, I'm going to be helping BV3 next year. <laughs> okay, so, this year. so like 50-plus years of knowledge over yeah, here. So yeah, yeah. anyone out there, drop us a comment, send us a message, let us know what kind of episodes, podcasts, conversations that we can have. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah, no problem. You're, you're an open book, and we've got all the time in the world now, Dad. I don't know about that. It seems like I'm more busy now than when I, I raced, know. you know. Yeah. When I raced, I was focused. I mm-hmm. didn't. Now I'm, like, all over the place, you know. So... It's a different world doing what I'm doing now, but uh, it, it's all right. Well, maybe we'll uh, have to discuss and fill everyone in on what you've been doing. Yeah, yeah, who knows? I don't know. People don't want to be bored with that. I don't know. Oh, well, we'll find out. <laughs> but thank you, guys. Um, by the time this podcast comes out, I should have checked the date, but the date of the motorsport show, the 21st? Somewhere's around there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the twenty, the weekend of the 20th, 21st double check me guys but we will be there both friday and saturday motorsport show at the greater philadelphia expo center Mm -hmm. and um, we're gonna have some exciting stuff dropping we're gonna have brand new t-shirts out with all of dad's amazing career stats on it we're gonna have die cast cars all the good stuff so definitely be sure to come out check it out uh they'll have a schedule up online on their website Buffy will be selling the book. Buffy will have the got to get the book. The last, gotta get the book. Yep, got to get the book. Um, so with that being said, thank you guys. I hope you enjoy this. Please. What? This year's the open house. Open house. Yes, thank you. We haven't set a date yet. We're going we to wait soon. to see what everybody's dates are for races. Yes. But it's usually in July. July. And it's going to be a Sunday. It'll be a Sunday. So there's four we, days there. we really love to see you. Come mm-hmm. out and say hi. If you have any things you want signed or whatever, We'll sign them for you and oh, uh, yeah. it's a great time you know you can check out the trophy room the race shop and uh mike moved in he's got the center section of the garage now so, so we'll have a race car for him down so here we'll have that we'll <laughs> bp3 in the front with his new race mm-hmm. car so uh it, it'll it'll be it's always a fun time we always look forward to seeing a lot of i call them friends they're fans but they're yeah. friends to me over the years show up and uh have a good time I hope you know my brother and I are still in the disagreement argument that, you know, BP3 got the front of the shop. Yeah, yeah. If it were us, you would have put us in the back. He, he's gotten the privilege. Yeah, but he's little. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Um, please like, subscribe, share this on all your platforms. And if you enjoyed this, tag us on your social media. Thank you.